Lingle, Mr. Chicago himself from the Telegraph. Right here on my crime scene. Don't get too excited, Jarecki. It's just that you've got the only dead body in town right now. Yeah, well, if you're here, it must be important. Tell you what we'll do for you, Jake. We'll leave him hanging there till dawn. That way your photographer gets some nice light for his picture. What do you know about him, Jarecki? Eh, not much. Looks like your typical stock market crash type of suicide to me. He parked his car over here. His car, the Cadillac? Yeah. So he was flush. Yeah, it looks that way. But then again, how in the hell can you tell with the stock market caving in the way it did? <laughs> hell, he might be as busted as I am. You want us to leave him hanging there till dawn? Nah, cut him down. I don't care about suicides. Why are you being so accommodating, Jarecki? Bill Sullivan is retiring next month. It'll leave the 23rd Donald Lieutenant. I was thinking of a little help. Maybe I could be the guy to fill the spot. I'm a newspaper stiff, Jarecki. Why are you talking to me about your cop career? Come on, Jake. Everybody knows you're Chicago's unofficial chief of police. On account of you growing up with Chief Russell. It'll pay off in spades for you down the line if you help me out on this one. Down the line? How are you going to take care of me down the line? For starters, I'll put a thousand bucks cash in your hand the minute I lose these stripes and get myself some bars. After that, Anything happens in the ward, you get the scoop. There'll be other things. I don't do business on the installment plan, Jarecki. You ready with that grand cash? On the barrel head. Let me think about it. I'll take care of the press. If that's all right with you, Sergeant. Evening, Chief. Howdy, Bill. How are you doing? OK. Right, what have we got here? Looks like just another depression suicide. Not much in it for me. Nothing like a good murder for selling papers. Is there, Jake? Or even a bad one. Let's say we get out of here. Go get a drink. I'll even let you buy. <laughs> Don't you know that's against the law, Jake? <laughs> truck sale. Hey, Jake, what do I look like? Henry friggin' Ford? You want trucks? Get trucks. In the meantime, relax. Let me enjoy my favorite movie, all right? We're down 8.5% last week. Only we're not down because of a lack of production. We're down because of problems with distribution. Now, the reason this pains me is because I predicted this. <laughs> I tried to get you and Frank to approve buying more rolling stock over a month ago. I please fall on deaf ears because of other things. Parties in Miami, plane trips to California. Jake, you're talking to me about things that ain't none of your business. Now, what is your business, and what I pay you for is to take care of these things. Now, you want trucks, then get trucks. Now, let me watch my movie. I got a way to make millions. You don't need trucks. We get Louise Brooks to come back from Germany, and we'll put her in stags. All right, that's it. This is one of the most beautiful women in the world. And you're sitting around here talking like she's some kind of a whore. You all make me sick to my stomach. Now get out of here. Come on, get out of here. You stay put. All right, I got the solution to your problem. We don't need to buy no trucks. We got trucks every day all over the city delivering one thing. Newspapers, Guzik. Telegraph goes everywhere in Chicago. We'll let them help. Enjoy this movie, Jake. Either shut up or get out. <laughs> her name is Dory Green. Would you like me to hire her, Colonel McCabe? No, Hastings, I would like for you to find a reporter already in our employ who can beat her. Yes, sir. Next time I read about the escapades of this Elliot Ness Hastings, I'd like for it to be in my own newspaper. Uh, yes, sir. I'll get right on it, Colonel McCabe. You boo Can the Colonel come out and play with Miss Helen now? Well, yes. I do think I have a little time to play. So tonight, we take on Bugs Moran. We're gonna walk in like we belonged 
and shut down his glorious Sheridan Wave Club on opening night. Moran is Capone's biggest competitor by hitting him, aren't we, doing Snorky a favor? No, we're doing ourselves a favor. See, Moran's new club caters to the Gold Coast crowd. So tonight, if we're lucky, we'll bag a big shot or two. That means headlines. Why do we care about headlines? Shouldn't we be more concerned with running up arrests? Tony, the people in this city, they see these racketeers as unstoppable. So every story they read about us, it helps us take that myth and kill it. Which is why Mr. Ness has got a little surprise for you tonight. We'll have a reporter from the Daily News along with us on the raid tonight. Dory Green. A lady. That's right, Steelman. Yeah, that means you're gonna have to watch your language as well as your aim, Steelman. Copy. I yelled for the copy boy, not the city editor, Walt. Well, let me see what you've got, Jake. Three graphs on a suicide. You want more than three graphs? Chase it with one of the Saab sisters. I don't do suicides, Walter. I do crime. And you're not doing it very well. What's that supposed to mean? Dory Green keeps beating you on the nest stories, Jake. Huh. Yeah, what's the matter? Can't keep up with a little lady. Yeah. Well, maybe you should think about it, Walter. And maybe Dory Green, the little lady, can do things for Elliot Ness that I'm in no position to do. Things the man upstairs would find unacceptable. Oh, I didn't know you were religious. I'm talking about Colonel McCabe. Yeah, don't worry about it, Jake. 18 years of the telegraph, he doesn't even know your name. But he knows Elliot Ness's name, and he wants to know why he has to keep reading about him in somebody else's newspaper. You tell that phony Colonel to go to hell if he doesn't like what I'm doing, Walter. I worked for everything I got every damn thing and you tell him when elliot ness does something worth writing about then elliot ness will get his name in the telegraph then that stuffed shirt up there he'll know who jake lingle is driver home. I told him you wouldn't be needing him for the rest of the evening. And why is that? Because Mr. George Moran requests the pleasure of your company. I'm opening up the Sheridan Wave Gambling Club tonight. It's gonna be a game of event. I need to know if your friend Russell is gonna give me the nod. That's a tough one, Bugs. <sighs> well, I'll make it easier for you, Jay. 1,500 in Sheridan Wave markers signed by me. Give it some thought, Jay. Enjoy yourself a week, well. nuts out. This whole thing is nuts. Hey, Jake, you told me you want trucks. I'm gonna get you damn trucks, all right? All the newspaper trucks in town, they come by here every night. 365 days a year. And I'm gonna show you what these newspaper trucks can be used for. All right. You pull them over. See? Watch this. Thanks a lot for stopping. Yeah, what can I do for you? Hey, tell you what, why don't you uh, talk to my boss? Yeah? Oh, no. Mr. Capone. How you doing? Thanks for stopping the help. The world could use a few more good Samaritans like you, you know? You got a wife and kids? Hard times like this. It must be good to have a nice, secure job at the Telegraph, huh? Yeah. But it's still a struggle every month, making the rent. Paying the bills. Yeah. So what's your up? Please, Mr. Capone, I just have to give this fellow a hand. Relax. I... This is Al Capone talking. 
Ain't nobody gonna hurt you here. I'm just asking you about your route. Bridgeport, down by Kaminsky. South side, huh? That's good. How'd you like to make yourself a few extra bucks every night? How'd I do that? All you gotta do is deliver a few cases of scotch to these addresses. They're right on your route. Your boss, McCabe, will never have to know. What's your name? Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. You tell all your friends that are interested that there's more where this came from. Thanks, Mr. Capone. How do you know he's gonna deliver? Hey, Jay, I'm Al Capone. I pay somebody to deliver something. You think they ain't gonna deliver it? Keep up the good work, fellas. All right, fellas, bust open a case, help yourselves, all right? Thanks a lot, Mr. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Chicago Telegraph. All the booze that's fit to drink. Problem solved. Let's go get some rigatonis, boys. <laughs> Let's suit up. We got an opening night to attend. The thing to remember about the journalists in this town is they're all easy. I mean, how much did you pay for that paper? Two cents. Ah, bad investment. If you'd spent an extra penny, you could have had the, the reporter as well. Damn this. If I can be of some assistance, oh, uh, no charge. I wasn't referring to you, of course. Oh, yeah. President company accepted. You know, I feel like a flippin' head waiter dressed up like this. Is that so? Mm-hmm. The story was saying how natural you look as a big-time high roller. Is that right? Hmm. I think that's a compliment. Okay, men. Let's saddle up. Miss Kenilworth. Thank you, McBride. Might Mr. Moran be here? Oh, you know Mr. Moran, Miss Kenilworth. He's much too shy to enjoy his own parties. Never has gotten over that messy Valentine's business, has he? Pity. Come on, ten. Just once. Lay a ten on Seven. Don't you think we should call it a night, Jake? Nah. I feel real lucky. I'll be back. <laughs> Jarecki, a thousand bucks. No, two thousand bucks, and the job is yours. Only I need it tonight. The Sheridan Wave Club, on division. Sent us over. What? Said he might need a second shift on the dice table. 
Okay. Somebody must have got sick or something. Hey. Tom's got a nice place here. Yep. Gentleman who's in ship, Colonel Thompson. You have a problem with that, Mahoney? I got their attention. Thank you, Mr. Malone. For federal agents, this place is closed. What we're interested in is all the high rollers. Anyone wearing a tux or a gown, over against the wall. That means all you low-life layabouts in tuxedos and your doxies get over there. The rest of you get out. Come on. Let's move it. All right, let's go. Yeah, all right, I'll bring you some Come on, come on. Easy, I'm I you. Keep your hands busy. I'm Mr. Ness. With your permission, I'd like to deepen this investigation. Go right ahead. Well... You look like a damn gopher under there. Out! Well, well, what have we up against the wall. Gentlemen, the pride of the 23rd Precinct, Sergeant Jarecki. This is like a revolving door at Marshall Fields. Have so. We arrest them, we book them, they spend the night, they make bail. A day or two later, maybe three, they're back at work. So what's the point? The point is I was hired to enforce the law, and that's what I intend to do. And little by little, we'll chip away at them. Make them find a new place to run their gambling den, a new way of working. And then one day, we'll run across an honest judge or an incorruptible prosecutor, and that door won't revolve. It'll slam shut. That'll be the day. You write these stories, Dory. And that day will come. The people will demand it. You're not listening to me, Bill, and I'm the guy who's looking out for you. Don't think I don't appreciate it. You're the chief of police. And all this time, I thought that's what you were. You're the chief, and Ness is making you look bad. That bus tonight's big news, and he's taken all the credit. Even had a reporter with him. Oh, so that's the problem. He didn't invite you. That should be from the Daily News, Story Green. How might you know that? It's worse than you think. One of yours got pinched. It doesn't look good for you at all. You better take care of it. Now, Bill. Sleep tight, gentlemen. What are we going to do with him? A Chicago police officer. One of the city's finest. In the flesh. A damn disgrace of what he is. Yes, Malone. I understand congratulations are in order, gentlemen. You're right about your record here. He's a disgrace. Hey, you boys know Jake Lingle of the Telegraph? Never had the pleasure. Elliot Ness. I enjoy your work. Thank you. The feeling's mutual. Me too. Dory Green, Chicago Daily News. The only thing missing from your stories, Mr. Lingle, is coverage of my squad. Maybe next time. Maybe tomorrow. Come along with us for the ride. You're good copy, Ness. I think I'd enjoy that. Save me this one first, Ellie. Tell me how you pulled it off before I read about it in Miss Green's newspaper. I'll tell you, Chief, it's not much... You're ready. Be You're off. finished. The only guy having a worse night than you, Jarecki, is Moran. He lost his glorious cup the first night it opened. Untouchables? It wasn't the Untouchables. Opponent's responsible. Opponent's gonna pay in more ways than that silly Dago brain will ever understand. Lingo is an opportunistic little cockroach. He's the worst of a despicable breed. You can't trust the son of a bitch. I hear you. Lingo is the unofficial chief of police in this town. He fixes the price of beer and he pals around with Capone. Ness, this is a bad idea. He sees an opening. He's going to try and work you. And that's precisely why I want him going along with us. In tennis, they call it an effective return of service. Oh, fine. Well, I'm glad you learned something in college. Now, perhaps you'd be so kind as to tell me precisely what raid it is that he is going to join us in tomorrow. The one we're going to invent, Mike. A 
love a man in black tie. I didn't realize the Treasury Department required it. We were busting a gambling joint. I figured it looked the part. Did the newspapers go along again? It's the only way to fight this war. You've always been my hero, and now you're going to be everybody else's hero. Don't be ridiculous, Catherine. And I'm not sure I'm going to like sharing you. It's been a long night, Danny. Promise me, no calls. Don't worry, Mr. Lingle. I never put through any calls. If I did, you'd never get any sleep. Pretty hot, Mr. Ness. This is all really intoxicating, isn't it? The danger, the fame. <sighs> Jeez, did somebody answer that? you. I told you, no calls. I'm sorry, but he's called a dozen times. He says he's a police sergeant and I have to put him through. All right, go ahead. What do you want now, Jarecki? Everything you touch turns to garbage, Jack. My promotion becomes a demotion. You're no good. I never told you to get pinched in that joint, Jarecki. You just stood there, Jake. And let Malone make me look like a dirty cop. Even though you're no good, Jake, I'm gonna give you an exclusive. What's that? Okay, boys, hold it there a second. Never knew Jarecki was such a good shot. All right, boys. Mr. Ness is sealing up. Take him away. Dory, you got any more questions about last night's raid, I'll be happy to answer them. But I got nothing to say about Jarecki. He was a crooked cop. He should have known better. Yeah, well, maybe I have. That's just the way it is. Yeah. You're full of surprises, Ness. I thought you'd be grieving over Jarecki. Malone, you took an oath. I took an oath. Jarecki took an oath. He didn't live up to his. Well, it's subtle. Yes, it is. Now, what do you say we devise a little raid for Mr. Lingle and his good friend Snorky Capone? This is your last marker, Jake. As far as I'm concerned, we're square. 
You don't have to do that, Al. I'm good for it. You know that. I know that, Jake. That's why I'm doing it. The way I figure it is one hand washes the other. You know what I mean? Let me ask you a question. Why is it nowadays everybody's such a critic, huh? Especially in your business. I mean, I've been reading these articles in the Daily News about this chippy. What's her name? Dory? Dory Green. Anyway, she's talking about what a hero this alien Ness is, you know? And why is this guy such a hero? What does he do for the people, huh? Does he put bread on the table? And am I such a bad guy because I supply the people with wine, women, and song? All the pleasures in life that the people deserve, huh? I'm a man just like they are. I got the same desires, same hopes, same dreams. Only differences. I make my dreams come true a little easier. Now, what should I do? Should I apologize for that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Al Capone can't tell the difference between a gunshot and a Packard backfiring. Preservation. Maybe you should too, Jake. Take care of yourself, Jake. So if we cover this exit here and this one here, we should be all right. No man on the roof? No, no, no. No one's getting out through the roof. I had steelmen go up there and seal it off. That Indian walks real quiet. Okay, Ness. I decided to take you up on your offer. Well... If it isn't a distinguished reporter from the Telegraph, come along for the ride. Give us just a minute, Jake. We need to finish going over our plan. Don't you think it would be better for the story if you let me in on the details? I mean, it'd really help if I know where we're going. The only person who has to know where we're going is the driver, and you ain't he. What would you do with that information, Jake? I want a photographer to meet us there. The story will have a lot more impact if there's a picture to go along with it. Is that so? People would pay more attention to those stories in the daily news if Ness's friend Dory would take a photog along with her. All right, Jake. You made your point. Here's the address. You can use the phone in the other room. That's right. I'm gonna need a photog at 1643 South Cicero in about an hour. Uh-huh. 1643. It's Ness. Gotta get everything out of South Cicero right now. I want that place to look like a foul factory in 30 minutes. You got it. So, Lingo, what exactly is it about that Dago bum that appeals to you? It's good copy, Malone. I don't make the news, I don't judge it, I just report it. All these years, you've never been able to get that through that thick skull of yours. Oh yeah, you report it, you report it real good. Funny, I must have missed that story about Jarecki this morning. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I understand you had an exclusive, but I didn't read about it in the Telegraph. Mike, give him a break. Could have been easy getting that phone call. Yeah, it wasn't. I don't know why he called me. Oh, and he called you because you're the great reporter. After all, you've got to know everything fast. Both of you, come on. The guy's dead. He's a Chicago police officer. Let's show some respect. I did my part. I let him rest in peace. Besides, everyone knows, Jake Lingle doesn't do suicides. I do crime. All right, Sonny. I want you to watch this very carefully now. Because this isn't something that the nuns are going to teach you in school. Right? Now, a cigar is a work of art. A man's not a man unless he has one. Unless the way daddy smells us. You try. It smells like dog poop. You guy. <laughs> when it comes to your cigars, Alphonse, I think Sonny takes after me. Look, I hope you're not going to be a bad influence on him, man. I mean, the kid's got to grow up to be a man. Be a great senator, make his father proud. Ain't that right, Sonny? Come in. Hey, May, you're looking beautiful today. Thank you, Frank. Well, Sonny, kiss your papa goodbye. Go over here, you. Loves you. <laughs> <laughs> he 
later, honey. Come on, honey, fine. We'll take a ride up to Buffalo and get you an ice cream sundae. Well, the guys are doing a hell of a job. How's that, Frank? Well, they cleared out Cicero and we're not going to lose a drop of production. And they sent all the extra men up to North Kilbourne. And they picked up the pace. That's the best news I heard since last night. What are we doing? What does it look like we're doing? I don't know, picking up some more men? I mean, this is North Kilbourne, not South Cicero. Is that right? Good heavens. We must have been talking so much in the car I didn't notice. What did you think, Jake? We're going to tell you where we're actually going? You're a reporter. Yeah. Doesn't look as if your photographer's going to turn up. Well, this is going to be a real challenge for you as a writer. I mean, all your readers going to have to depend on is their imaginations and your writing. All right, move it out. Entschuldige, Frank, es ist sehr wichtig. Ich muss unbedingt mit R sprechen. Was du nicht sagst, Jake. Ain't good enough. No, I'm not saying you're not good enough, Frank. It's just that I know Al's there. We ain't here for you now, Jake. Frank. Frank, just tell me. Is he pissed? He's pissed, Frank. Let's just say that he ain't happy. What you did was unreliable, Jake. It was very unreliable. They switched up on me, Frank. They told me Cicero. They took me to Kilbourne. I couldn't do nothing about it. Yeah, well, it sounds like to me you've been working two sides of the street, Lingo. Al Capone's been very good to you. Now all of a sudden, this Elliot Ness comes along. Looks like he's going to be better newspaper copy, so you sell out your friend Al Capone. Well, that ain't right. You gotta understand that, Frank. You gotta let me explain that to Al. Why don't you just go to the track, Jake? You leave us alone. So Ness pulled it off. Well, Lingo really stepped in it this time. You can't screw around with big Al Capone like that. That's good, that's real good. Now maybe the SOB will find out he doesn't own this town, he just works here. Capone. He's gonna learn a hard lesson about who really owns this town. I got five dollars, which says he'll never publish that story. You're right. What's this? No, no haggling, no hesitation. This is not like you, Ness. I hear Lingle's under a lot of pressure from his editors. He needs this story to keep him off his back. Oh, uh, so that's it, eh? Trading on insider information. Now, is that right? No, but it's typical. Dory, come in. Have a seat. A uh, cup of coffee. No, I wouldn't want you to go out of your way. What's wrong? Nothing other than the fact that you two are a couple of ingrates. Why? Because of Lingo? Oh, come on now. I've got five dollars says he'll never publish that story. Put your money on the table, I'll cut you in. Is that on the record? Why? I thought you busted gambling dens. I didn't know you operated them. <laughs> I love hot-blooded women. <clears throat> that was not business. Just in case you didn't know, uh, take a tip from your Uncle Michael. That was personal. I think she likes you, laddie. <laughs> hey, Jake. It was a horrible thing what happened to Jurek, but it was good of you to keep it out of the paper. Jurek, it was a good man. I felt for him. And we appreciate that. Take care of yourself, Jake. This for the form, Sally. Take a look at Barack and the six, J.D. Jake! 
Hey, Jake Lingle. Jake. Hi, Schneider in the eighth. It's a winner. But thanks. I need all the help I can get. Al Capone believes in self-preservation. Maybe you should too, Jake. What you did was unreliable, Jake. It was very unreliable. Those footsteps you're hearing are mine. You know too much to be on the streets. Jake Lingo doesn't do suicides. I do crime. 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 Lingo was the unofficial chief of police in this town. What you did was unreliable, Jake. Pick your friends more pick carefully, friends. Jake. Let's pick your friends. Let's pick your friends. Pick your friends. You're right at the intersection of everything that's wrong in this city. Can't play both ends against the middle, Jay. Middle, Jay. What's Capone think of your buddy Russell? He called you because you're the great reporter. I love this guy. <laughs> Take care of yourself, Jake. Watch Russell think of your buddy Capone. You sold out your friend Al Capone. That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. You stepped on too many toes, Lingo. Sounds to me like you've been working two sides of the street, Lingo. This is your last market, Jake. We're square. If it isn't the distinguished reporter from the Telegraph, along for the ride. Jake, it's been real nice knowing you. Dead or alive, you just ain't on a page. Al Capone believes in self-preservation. Maybe you should too, Jake. Just got the word. Jake Lingle's dead. How? 22 caliber with a silencer. Close range, back of the head. They got him in the IC tunnel on his way to the racetrack. Sounds professional. Yep. Could it have anything to do with our switching breweries on the little bastard? Capone's got that temper. I wouldn't put it past him. So finally caught up with that greedy little double crossing bastard. Reporter. He's out with damn reporter. That is not good. It's going to be hell to pay. And what do you want me to do about it, huh? Besides, Lingo wasn't a reporter. You know it, I know it. He got what he deserved. <laughs> 